Welcome to the Kingdom Living Podcast with Glenn Reppel. What a pleasure it is to have you here today. I know we're going to get blessed today. Uh, it's a, it's an amazing day, and it's going to be an amazing topic. You know, if you've been following uh, Kingdom Living for any amount of time, you know these messages are they just get richer and richer. And and Glenn, how are you today? I I'm, I am fantastic, and uh, it is a glorious day, and God just continues to use. Uh, this method of of uh, the word of God spreading to the nations. So, so we're just really excited with what's happening. You know, it really is so fun because we're always careful at the beginning to say this, you know, it's really not an opinion show. We're just quoting uh, from from uh, God's word in the Bible. And we talked about this, uh, you know, the, the, the uh, messages are reaching now the better part of 3 million people globally uh, every 90 days or so, and um, just love the response to the one that we did recently called The Good News, and I think that's going to be part of the conversation today, is really learning. You know, Glenn, you have taught so much along the way about the value of kingdom living, and you make this differentiation between the world system, which we've taught, or you've taught a lot on, uh, calling it the red line system versus uh, the, the kingdom of God and the green line system. And by the way, if you're new to this, everything that we're talking about, this is like literally episode number 98. And so if, if you get an opportunity, all of these are available to you at therepleminute.com. You can access Glenn's daily Monday through Friday Repel Minute. You can pick up your copy of uh, Glenn's book, Fraud, What God Has to Say About the Tactics of the Enemy. You can find the whole fraud series there. Um, you can look at all the kingdom livings, but in particular, we'd like to have you uh, as maybe a backdrop for some of the things we're going to talk about today, understand that red line, green line living concept, Glenn, because that's foundational. You've got to make that shift in your head to say, like, I'm following the Lord. I'm, I want to be about kingdom yeah. living. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, th thank you, Carrie. And I, I tell you what, th this is a real honor and a privilege to introduce uh, our guest today, uh, which is A.V. and Michelle Shaw. And uh, they're friends, and uh, it just it it just it, they're amazing people. And and you 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 uh, I call Av to uh, I call him my water walker friend because because when I'm around him and Michelle, I just feel like I, I like he's walking on water. And how we connect because uh, many times uh, we, we, it just early in the morning we're we're three o'clock four o'clock. Uh, we, we may talk for an hour from four o'clock to five o'clock about what the Lord is showing us. And it just, it's just like iron sharp, but it's the Holy Spirit working through each one of us. And, and uh, uh, A.V. is just full of stories about how God's worked with him. Uh, he, and a, uh, he and Michelle are just, they're, they're very, very generous people. And one of the stories I remember, uh, which really just was so reflective of, of, of him and, and both of them, uh, was, was he gets a knock at the door and it's an ice cream man. And, and, uh, and the ice cream man says, you know, your son, your young son here says that you were, you, you're going to buy all the ice cream for everybody in the neighborhood. And he, and he says, oh yeah, yeah. And the idea was his son, his young son knew his father would do that for everybody. And so that generosity just flows through him. And just to know that that's our heavenly father also, and how he wants to give good gifts. And the son knew that about his daddy, about his father. And I just thought that was such a great thing. And the other thing is that as A.V. and Michelle, as uh, A.V. kept on asking, because because he lives in Jacksonville, we live in Orlando, and uh, he says, uh, uh, and and uh, he says, Glenn, I need a picture of you. I need a picture of you. Uh, so so when when we text or whatever, uh, I can have a picture of you when when I look at you. And so uh, he sent me his picture, was which is uh, water walking. And so here's my picture which is uh, the river of living water flowing through us. And again, that's a teaching that we've done. And so this all ties together is that how do we see when we look in a mirror, what do we see? 
Do we see Jesus? Are we seeing Jesus in, in the mirror that I look in? And so that's been a part of the conversation that Avi and Michelle we've had sometimes. And, 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 and the idea is that we are Jesus incarnate here on earth now. And so we have that anointing with us. So this is the picture that we want to look at when we look into the mirror, we see the reflection of Jesus in our lives and the light of uh, the light shining through us. So uh, with that, uh, A.V. and Michelle, just uh, also uh, how we met was through the book fraud, basically, and uh, with you ministering with the book. And uh, why don't you just tell a little about how, how all that came about and tell also your luggage story also, uh, which is kind of, kind of an interesting thing. So, A.V.? Well, we... Um, I was invited out to, um, to see walk, um, to talk and be honest with you. I didn't want to, um, I, I, cause you're, you know, when you, when you start talking, you don't, I don't know what's going to come out of my mouth sometimes. And so, you know, I'm kind of wondering what the Lord's doing. And when I get out there, I'm just being myself. Um, I'm trying to look, I asked the Lord, I'll talk to whoever you want me to talk to. And there was a, uh, uh, a lady there and I just, you know, I just looked at her and I said, do you need, I said, you need a daddy hug. That's all I said. And all at once tears started coming in her eyes. And, uh, I went, yep, yeah, here it comes again. And I went, you need to forgive your dad. And she just gritted her teeth. She goes, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I said, okay. I said, what's your dad's name? And she told me. And I said, okay, I'm going to stand in for him. And I look at this young woman and I said, baby girl, will you please forgive me? Because. I need your forgiveness so I can get a chance to go to heaven. Mm. And she just started crying and she goes, yes, daddy, I'll forgive you. Mm. And then I said, okay. And I had my little hand. I put it on her, her shoulder like this. And I went, Holy Spirit, fill her up with daddy's heart right now. And then I couldn't help it. She was just started crying. So I had to hold her, you know, because she's crying her eyes out. And um, then in a minute, I said, okay, now you have to just forgive everybody that's ever hurt you. And it was easier to forgive everybody once you hurt, you know, because it's your father. And there's some, you know, things that go on. We all know there's things that go on with fathers and daughters that shouldn't go on. And uh, there was another lady sitting there listening, and she goes, well, I don't need that. I said, oh, okay, well, then I guess I don't need to talk to you. She said, oh, no, I, I've been forgiven. I said, oh, okay, okay. Well, um, huh. And she said, what do you mean? I said, there's still unforgiveness in you. I can see it. Mm -hmm. And I said, and all at once, the Lord gave me a gentleman. And I, rec I didn't recognize him, but I could explain it to her, the color of his skin, how big he was. I said, have you forgiven that person? And she said, how would you know? I said, the Lord talking to me. And she said, okay. Then she started crying to forgive a man in her life. And I found out that a lot of people, it's very difficult for them to forgive the people that stab them in the back. That's the easiest way to say it. They don't, they, because they think you're a Christian or you say you're a Christian, then they come, they want to borrow money. They want to steal your food. They want to take your car. They want, they think that you're supposed to just financially take care of them for the rest of their life. 
And, um, you know, everybody has problems. And so they have to learn to go through them because Jesus said, forgive them. Mm -hmm. And they'll never, you'll never get the father's heart will never come inside of you if you have this unforgiveness. Mm -hmm. And all you got to do is ask him. You just say, Holy Spirit, show me unforgiveness. And they'll pop up just like that. Mm -hmm. Amen, amen, amen. And it may take you three or four days to get over that mm -hmm, mm -hmm. because he's going to show you all the way back when you're little. And this is one of the things um, my wife and I, we've been in meetings before in church and um, she'll look at me and she'll go, there's go into specifics. <laughs> I know, there's a suicide. Yes. And uh and I don't hear it, but she did. And I said, okay. And we found out at the end of the meeting, we kind of stand up and say, hey, there's someone in there that's going to kill themselves. Raise your hand. Then you go over there and you minister the love of the father to her because it's all that hate and stuff they have for somebody, and usually it's their earthly father. And once they forgive them, and it's really strange the way God just, he told me, he said, just stand in the place of their earthly father. If his name is Rick, you be Rick and just ask for forgiveness. And it works every time. I mean, every time they get a cleansing that is, we've done this. Every, every time I'm around a group of people, somebody's going to get it. It's just what happens. I mean, uh, I can't explain it. And uh, but it's everywhere. It's everywhere we go. Right. It could be Walmart. It could be Publix, the gas station. You can't stop him. There's no stopping him. But what I found out was there's a word that God showed me. He said, "It's a setup." Yes. Okay. And I went, "What are you talking about? It's a setup." He said, look at Joseph. If, if there was anybody that was supposed to get mad and angry and hate his family forever, I mean, come on. He was, he was so, you know, he, he could do dreams. And his brothers threw him in a pit. They were going to kill him. And they said, no, let's make him coin on him, some money on him. So they sold him. And then he's a slave. And then, and, and in his head, you think, I got dreams. God is using me, but I'm, you know, I'm being hauled off and being sold. And every time the blessings of the Lord was with him, every place he got. And what a lot of people, and I mean, a ton of them, including myself, you look back in your life and you're mad at things, but everything that happened, everything that's happened in all my life, Got me right here in front of, of you guys to say something that's going to touch a girl, a boy, because they're going to forgive their earthly fathers. And as soon as they do it, God's going to turn their heart. In Malachi, sorry, he's going to. Turn their heart, and all at once, they're going to scream out for the Holy Spirit to fill them up with God's heart. Mm -hmm. And then all at once, their life is going to go, well, what do you mean I can't do this anymore? What do you mean? I, I, you want me to do this? You want me to go talk to this person? You want me to go give 10 bucks to my neighbor for something? And it's, just, it's all a setup. This here, I've been waiting for it since I was 40 to do something because all it was, I see what God is doing with it. And it will go, uh, it's just like a seed. A seed has to be hybrid to be planted. And once you ask God, what? once you get a relationship with him, and then you go to him and go, I give you all my money. 
I give you all my abilities to make money. I give you everything I've ever thought of. And you stand in a, a little circle and you stand there, you draw it on the ground, you get in it and say, okay, oh, you can have me. I'm the offering. I, this is God, because when I said that, I saw myself crawling up on the fire like the little boy did when his daddy was going to take a knife and kill him. Mm -hmm. You've got to get to that point where that you give your life mm -hmm. to the Lord and he takes you and just, and he, like clay, and he, and then he goes, boom, there's somebody new now. You're, you're the same on the outside, but the inside's all new. And you have that relationship with the Father. And then every, and you start looking for every day, everywhere you go, you're looking, you're looking. Where's the setup? Who do you want me to talk to? Oh, it's a little lady in a wheelchair counting pennies to pay for something. And all at once, you just look at the teller and go, I got it. And you pay for it. You pay for yours. And then you look at the lady and go, this is the day you never thought God was listening to you. He paid for all your stuff today. He loves you. He heard you. He saw you counting and you couldn't count the money. But I said, you got to understand, God wants you to be wise with your money. You can't be giving it to your children every time they call. You can't do that. They're stealing money from you or your neighbors. They all know when you get your check. Mm -hmm. And so then they come to you and you have a good heart. So you help them. You better ask the Holy Spirit if you're supposed to help them. And she's just crying. The cashier's crying. The man I was with, he's crying. And we, we all walk outside and he's going, how do you do this? I see you doing it all the time. I go, it's not me. It's not me. It's daddy doing it. It's okay, babe. It's just daddy doing it. And then you turn around and somebody in the business that we're in calls or somebody does something and God just comes back unexpected. And I can't explain. I tried to explain it to Mr. Ripple and I can't. I don't know how. I don't know how. I don't have the words to do it. I just, I know that, I just know that we, you have to ask the Father what to give. You can't get in a trap. And God works differently than man, I'm telling you. And if he tells you to give the shirt off your back, I guarantee you, in a week, you're going to run across a deal and you're going to get shirts because <laughs> we've done this. The shirts regularly priced for a hundred bucks and you get them for $10. And so you sit there and you go, okay, let's just buy 30 or 40 shirts. They're only 10 bucks or regularly 50 or a hundred. And then you have them and you give them out. You ask them, where do they go? And here, and here it goes. And it's, that's the way we live right now. We've been doing this for what a good 14 years, really strong, really strong word. I mean, if y'all see anything on the video and you go, I want it, just let me know, <laughs> you know, except for Michelle or the dog, that's the only two you can't have. I'm sorry. You can have the truck, you can have the keys, but you can't take my baby away from me. You know, my help me. Hey, A.V., um, tell yes. about how how you were using the book, uh, Fraud, and uh, how, how you've ministered through that. Well, the first thing about the fraud is said that 
I knew Satan's stolen stuff from me. But the first thing was the spirit. Mm. He stole the spirit man out of me. Mm. Well, there's something in the Bible somewhere that says you can get it seven times back, right? Yeah. Well, God ain't a liar. So I started asking for my spirit man back seven times. And uh, when I was at Seawalk, <clears throat> I just gave everybody there a book. Uh, Mr. Uh, Glenn gave me some books. And so I gave everybody one. And we started reading it. And then it dawned on me after about three or four weeks. I said, wait a minute. Do y'all want this or not? But the Lord just kept, it took each chapter. And as I was reading it, he was teaching me. You know, I was getting more out of it, explaining it than I was them. You know, you know what I mean? I, I, it sounds kind of funny to do it that way. And um, all at once, I saw people start doing things they hadn't done before, mm -hmm. um, giving their food away. That's really big when you're in an environment where that uh, you're coming off the street, living there, you need help, you you've um, know what it's like to be hooked on a, um, uh, you know, a drug of some kind or whatever it is, you're hooked on it. And um, we just we just started loving them. That's all. I mean, you wouldn't think a barbecue sandwich would mean any, anything to anybody. You know, and just bring in barbecue sandwiches and give away, say here, or bring in clothes. Or one time, we Lord told us to buy tooth um, brush and paste and you go and you don't realize in um some of the necessities of life that we take for granted that somebody else needs it and so my wife and i we just started buying extras of everything <laughs> that way somebody needs it and they're they're in our house well they get it and uh, we, the book was that way. It, it started opening up my heart to not just to 10 or 15 people. But all at once, I saw it with the men that ran the place. I saw it with the people out in the street. And then all at once, I saw it with business people that have employees that we all need generosity because you, if you look at our own lives, both of you men, how many times has anybody ever come up and say, oh, God told me that you needed a little cord to hook up with your phone. You broke yours or you lost it or something, you know, that simple. But this is the kind of things that God has used me as and i i just go okay here you need a cord well how'd you know that uh he told me you need it and i had an extra one in my briefcase so here you get it or and this is what that book did it see it started opening up things that i never thought about i never thought about life in a different way but the frog book, it just, each little section, I would go, you're right, that was stolen from me. I want it back seven times. I didn't know what I was saying. I just, I want it back seven times. And then I read the next chapter. I said, oh, yeah, I want this back seven times. Well, then I want this, I want the spirit back. I want, I want what he sold for me in, uh, in Adam and Eve. I want it back. I want, I want, I want. I want the abundance. 
I never asked for abundance in my life. I didn't know I could. But all at once I said, I want abundance mm -hmm. in everything. In, mm -hmm. But I want it in knowledge, how I want the, you know, it's funny, I got the pictures up. I want, I want the abundance that Jesus is talking about. Mm -hmm. in, I and again, his abundance so I can give it away. Amen. And you've been doing that. You've been giving away also using God's word every place you go in that spirit, soul, and body. And just, you know, it, just, just talk a little about divine health too. And 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 because we've had a lot of conversations about that and healing and and uh, uh, how God uh, his package, uh, which we've talked about is salvation and healing, healing and salvation together, and just how God's word just works so well uh, in, in that, in bringing healing. Well, see, if, if you go in Isaiah 53, it, it talks about by his stripes we are healed. Okay. That's just one part. That's from the whipping post. See, most people, they don't understand when Jesus went there, who whipped him? Roman. Under Roman law whipped him. Not under the Jewish law. The Romans whipped him. And those men, they whipped you until you bled to death. I mean, Jesus should have never, never got away from that post. He should have bled to death and died right there. But yet he had to go to the cross because the the whipping at the whipping post was for sickness and disease. Mm -hmm. It's for healing mm -hmm. of everything. Mm -hmm. Cross was for our salvation. The cross, you're right, was for salvation. What if he hadn't have made it to the cross? We would have had the healing, but we would not have had the salvation. Okay, what if Pilate had said, go to the cross first? We wouldn't have healing. We wouldn't have the healing. We'd have the salvation. So when this gets inside of you, this is what I'm telling you. The books, the fraud book kept opening up doors because I kept asking for seven times whatever was in that book. I think the hardest thing for me about the book was to go day by day. I'm like, no, I can't just do one day. I have to, I have to do a couple of days at a time. <laughs> be, 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 it was so good. You have to, um, how can I do this? Um, Holy Spirit, how to do this? You have to want so much of the Father and Father's Day is Sunday, by the way. So this is cool that we're doing this. You have to want him so much. And you have to believe that he can take care of everything. When my little boy, and I found out that what he had said, I got him off by himself. And I said, why did you tell the ice cream Man, I would pay for the ice cream. He said, yeah, because I know you would. I just know you'd do it. That's all. He didn't think about the money. He didn't think about nothing else. He just It just popped out of his mouth. My dad's going to buy everybody ice cream. I said, well, you're right. I did pay it. He said, well, I knew you would do it. What if we would take that same attitude <clears throat> and apply it to our father. God is the father is no joke. And it's like he's tired of people playing with him mm. or taking him and saying, okay, I'm going to put you in the garage in a place where I can see you. 
It's, this is getting real real to me. And you walk out and you see him, but you never say nothing to him. Mm. Until you get fired. Mm -hmm. And then you run out there and go, okay, I need you. Mm -hmm. What is so amazing, he still will talk to you. <laughs> and he will still help you. Mm -hmm. What happened if every day you got up? and said, I can't live without you. Mm -hmm. Now, what do you want me to do for you today? Who do you want me to talk? It's called a setup. And that's what you got to start looking for. When your car, the engine light blinks. Praise God. Praise God is the setup. You want me to go do something. Flat tire, mm -hmm. praise God. Now you're going to bring somebody to. I have gotten a ticket before. Crying over the phone. Yes. Talking to somebody like me. we're doing now. You were talking to me. Got a ticket. Looked up and there's, you know, I, I get a ticket for speeding. Guess who gets the fraud book? <laughs> the police officer. Uh-huh, because I carry him with me. I said, I got a book for you to read. He said, this is a setup. This he is said, a setup. I don't need this. That officer says, you know what, sir? I think I do. He still got the ticket, but. Uh, but. It was God. He set it up because I did. I don't get mad at, at things. But I, what did you say? The officer's like, you're not upset. He goes, no, he goes, you're doing your job. He yeah. said, I was feeding. He said, I wasn't paying attention. I was dropping off something at a church. I wasn't paying attention. I was talking to my wife, crying on the phone. I was feeding. Mm -hmm. You're doing your job. I'm not upset at you. I deserve the ticket. Give it to me. He says, but this is a setup. Praise God, because I think you need this book. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and tell about the story of, of the luggage uh, that, that time. The luggage was, you know, you just walk in your house, and I, I hear God say, give your luggage away. And I started to argue with him about it. There's nothing wrong with it. I said, okay. I said, where do you want me to take it? He told me. I said, okay, when do you want me to do it? That's the process. Every time, because it's a seed. That's all it is, to give it away. So I, uh, I knew who to give it to. He told me, so I took it out there and said, here's some luggage for you. And um, I came home, and I had some more luggage <laughs> that I won in a golf tournament. And uh, he said, take that out there. I said, okay. So I took that out there, gave it to the man. I come back home and a couple of days go by. And that's when, you know, the Lord said, well, you need some more luggage. <laughs> I went, I was like, really? I know this was going to happen, but I don't know where to go. Where do you want me to go? And he told me, um, I wanted, he said, buy luggage that has a lifetime warranty with it. I go, okay. So I go to the store to do this. And uh, I can't make up my mind which color to get. And I'm a man. <laughs> Men go in, we hunt, we know what we want, we get it, we kill it, and take it home. I mean, I, I can buy a shirt or a piece of luggage in five seconds well there were two stores one opened 30 minutes before right. the other one so we chose the other one uh we chose the first one to go to and so i can't make my mind up we were in there for two and a half hours mind you he's in usually 10 minutes he's done but no you had to decide on a color I had a color did. and then do you buy one with four wheels or two wheels do you buy what's on sale not on sale it just, my mind was settled. Then you said, ah, it's a setup, God. Yeah, yeah. So I started looking around the room, and there was this big man that um, looked like, I, when I saw him, I saw a football player as soon as I saw him. And I walked over to him. Um, he had an accent, and uh, I said, you know, God has some things for you, for me to tell you, but I'm not going to tell you if you don't want it. Just not going to do it. 
And uh, he said, well, yeah, I want, I want to know what. And so I started talking to him about his life. And uh, I said, oh, by the way, I got a book you got to read. It was a fraud book. So I ran out to the car, got the fraud book, brought it back. And I said, here, you're supposed to read this. And by the way, here's my card. And in the fraud book, I stamped my phone number in it in case somebody wants to call me. And uh, of course, nobody ever calls. You know, you just, I'm used to that. I said, okay, Lord, do what you wanted to me. I got the luggage and we left. That man called me two weeks later. Actually, a couple of days later. He didn't call me. What, it was two? Okay. He called and goes, um, I need. I want to talk to you more. And it was about the fraud book. It's about what was going on in his own business. And so we became real good friends over listening to God about giving the luggage away. And then from that, it's just like Joseph. It's the same principle. Every time it's a setup, every single time to get him to be ruler over two countries, basically, you know, and saving the lives of millions of people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So we, we don't know what the end result is, but I can say by reading that fraud book, and understand the principles of a setup mm. and being willing to give of yourself every time that we're all headed. That is our destiny. Amen. Raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out demons. Well, I'm going to tell you what I've learned. And when you give to people at the right time, you're casting something out of them because they have never had anybody to be a giver to them for no purpose. Amen. No, what's it called? Hidden, Hidden agenda. agenda. Exactly. exactly. I mean, I've been through a couple of strokes this year. I've had shingles. I've had a pacemaker put in. I've had kidney problems where the doctors, they all say, Sorry, because of your condition with blood sugar, we're not going to do the operation or can't do it. And I go in my bathroom and I get on my knees and I go, God, you're my healer. Yes. You're my deliverer. Now, I don't say it that nice. No, he screams out and I'm waiting for the lightning bolts to hit. I'm getting far, far away. <laughs> I mean, because you get to a point where that, you have money, you can pay for it, you have insurance, but they won't, none of that will fix the problem. Nope. And you literally, I'm sitting there screaming my guts out. You're you said you're my healer. You're my deliverer. I said if God, if I was in another country that has no medicine, no doctors. What are they going to do? They only have you. Mm -hmm. Just you. You're it. You got deliverance that day. And I've seen him heal shingles in my body in four days. Mm -hmm. And my doctor will tell you that can't happen. You have to have scarring. You have to. I said, no, nope, look, I got nothing. <laughs> I got nothing. And it was like when I'm crying out to him, I heard the noise like blowing out a birthday candle. I heard, I heard it with my ears. I did not feel it, but I heard it. That was with your kidney when you cried out. No, that's when it popped on yeah. the kidney, but the shingles, I heard the, I heard the noise and it was gone. All the fire in my body was gone. I got up and laid in the bed and just cried and cry, and cry, because he's so, he loved me that much, and I go, okay, and I can go ahead, yep, and I do this with you two guys, y'all ever need me, or something bugging you, and you can't get rid of it, call, mm -hmm. you call me, 
If, if, and, you, and, you, and you know when you're supposed to. You'll just, you know. I mean, I knew when I had to drive all the way to Orlando to see the man that wrote this book on fraud. And it just changed everything. Everything I went, I, I'm in a different area. I, I don't know how to explain it. I, I really don't. I try to do the best I can. But Glenn will never know what that book did for me. And I can't. It's just that I know that the people, if they'll just open their mouth and say, Father, I need you. Mm -hmm. I need you. I need you. And I'm counting on you. Mm -hmm. I need your heart. And forgive the people. Forgive your own earthly father because they didn't know how to usher in the love of a, the love of Jesus into our hearts. They did they weren't trained. It's not their fault. They just weren't trained. And this is something that This is what you got. You got to have it. This isn't, oh, I'm going to put it off tomorrow. You need the Father's heart. You need it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And th this is a now gospel. It's a now gospel. It's not a future gospel. It's a now. It's, it's the present. And as, as A.V., you said, uh, when we live in our own time, <laughs> we're living in that time whereas god is outside of time and with the presence of his holy spirit living inside of us we we walk in that same outside of time and uh, av and michelle thank thank you all so much for for sharing and and uh you know one of the things that av taught me right away uh when he he did two things when he came down to visit uh uh, he, he was telling about a little breakfast place down the street that they went and had breakfast and he left a hundred dollar tip there with, with the waitress and uh, prayed over her. And then he comes into the office and uh, as he's, as he's leaving, he gives me a hundred dollar bill and, and he says, go give it away. And what a privilege that was to go give it away and pray for somebody else. And one of the things that, that he taught me was, uh, when so, uh, when someone says to you, Av, thank you. What what do you say? Don't no, thank me. Don't thank me. Thank the Father. <laughs> yeah, thank the Father. So any time that we take that thank you in, guess what we're doing? We're raising ourselves up right, versus right. the Holy Spirit through the Father living inside of us. So we want to bring praise and honor to Him. And what a lesson that was. Uh, just learning that and walking through that because so many times we say yeah thank you and, and we receive it in no no thank him and uh, again thank the lord praise the lord for av and michelle uh, for being on kingdom living uh, and we just really appreciate you and and uh, just blessings uh, for, for your walk and and uh, it's such a joy and honor uh, to know them. And, and again, he is a water, he and Michelle are water walkers, because uh, the walk that they have is that uh, they, it's like Joseph, like he said, Joseph owned nothing, but he controlled everything. And so all the setups with his family uh, to Potiphar's house, being accused uh, and, and had to go to jail and everything he did and he moved up and what I've watched with A.V. and Michelle, how they have moved up and how God just totally blessed them financially, uh, but just all the treasures of heaven and the abundance. And, and we're just talking the other day is limiting ourselves. God is unlimited. Right, and and right, what are we right. limiting ourselves with when we have Christ in us, the hope of glory? And with that, just let's not limit ourselves to ourselves we have the Father, Holy Spirit uh, living inside of us. So Michelle and, and Avi, 
thank you so much for being on on, on our podcast today. We appreciate you all. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you. you so much. You know, Glenn, I've really been enjoying the conversation and and uh, what a great what a great moment to learn and listen. And one of the things I just want to kind of bring up as as we bring uh, this edition of Kingdom Living uh, to a conclusion was, you know, Glenn, when you came, when God gave you uh, fraud, what God has to say about the tactics of the enemies, we've talked about over and over that it's not a very intimidating book. It's 40 bite-sized chapters, but really what it's doing is it's moving you, as we talked about at the beginning, from understanding the difference of, of what, what you teach, the red line living, and moving you to the, to the kingdom living precept. And I think why that's so valuable, and a lot of people miss this, um, when you go to the repleminute.com, there isn't a donate here button. There's no uh, agenda here to say, you know, this is all about, Glenn, you've been doing this faithfully since 2006 with the Repl Minute. Uh, this is, like we said, just about episode number 100, just, uh, I think, just shy of it uh, for the Kingdom Living podcast. You wrote the, you wrote the, the fraud book to help people uh, get uh, over the perception that what they see in front of them is all there is. I couldn't help but thinking, uh, uh, Ave, as you were talking at the beginning, we have a mutual friend. His name is Dr. Dave Robinson. He's a very strong marketplace minister. And I just want to kind of close this and, Glenn, ask you to pray over everybody with the sound of our voice. But he always calls it his little yellow sticky note uh, word from the Lord. And it is, he wrote it down. He said, I stick this on my refrigerator so I remember it daily. And he said, it just basically says, Lord, let me be uh, a, a present help to whoever you have assigned me to meet today that I don't know I'm going to run into that assignment. That's and good. when you were talking about that, that is exactly, it just it just resonated so strongly. So thank, thank you for sharing that. Really enjoyed, uh, really enjoyed today. And Glenn, uh, I want to ask you if you could, because we have listen, listeners and viewers literally catch us as a podcast, see it on YouTube, uh, watch it on Facebook. But however people are reaching it, let's pray for them, Glenn. Amen. Amen. And, and the word that I got today, too, is, was uh, was in Mark 9, uh, verse 20, 24, uh, 23, 24. And, and, and again, this is when Jesus was healing. And, and, uh, and, and, and the Father says, and this is over the Son, I do believe, Lord, help me with my unbelief. Right. And, right. and what happens is unbelief is is believing in the wrong thing mm -hmm. unbelief is mm -hmm. believing in the wrong thing and so it is that yeah i believe but help me with my unbelief that that that's inconsistent do we really believe Our, and help no our unbelief is believing in the wrong thing and and as avia machia will talk was talking is is that our full trust and faith in the Lord Jesus Christ and, and just laying ourselves, as A.V. talked about, on the altar. And Father, we come to you. We come to you in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. And Father, we just, we know that you, hey. by your stripes, we are healed. Yeah. And there's the, those people that are that have pain. Uh, there's people that 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 are are suffering from uh, 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 heart disease now. And Father, we just we lift them up to you because you be healed, be healed. Amen. And Father, the word of God just speak into their lives and become alive. And Father, we just thank you. We thank you because your word does not return void. And we just thank you for this this form of, of internet that we can speak your word. And Father, we know that you are truth and your spirit speaks truth. Uh, your word speaks truth to, to those that are listening and watching. Father, we thank you. We praise your holy name. And to God be the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Well, thank you, viewer, for joining us for Kingdom Living Podcast with Glenn Reppel today. Uh, we're so excited about where God is moving this and really hope this impacts you. If you if it does, like and share and share it with those people in your circle and uh, just blessings ahead. And we'll see you next time on the Kingdom Living Podcast.